Okay, so in this video, we're going to build a very simple circuit here. We're just going to build a circuit that's got a 1 kilo ohm resistor, a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor, and a 5 volt power supply. Um, now, in the first lab, it does go through a fairly detailed exp explanation on how these breadboards are assembled. And I know mine looks a tiny bit different than yours, but it's still the same kind of thing. I just have two of them mounted next together um, to yours. Now, um, we talked about here in the thing where if you put in, I'm going to just put in two wires in this column here. Everything is connected in this column. And what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to put two wires in there, and I'm going to put the mode back on sound here. And then I'm going to take my probes and touch them and move my microphone. And you can hear that those are connected here. So this column, and then there's a, you know, another column, and mine has a plus and a minus on them, like uh, red and blue. Those columns are connected. And the reason we do that, that's typically where you put like your power and your ground. Uh, so it's easy to get power then to your components anywhere. Now, what we have here is these rows are connected, but we gotta be careful. This here, this creates a gap. So for instance, if I put these two wires in the same row on the left side of that gap and touch them together, you can hear the, uh, that they're connected. But then if I move this and keep it in the same row, but move it to the other side of that gap and touch them together, you won't hear anything. And that's because they're not connected. And that's for when we actually are putting chips onto this breadboard because the chips are in a particular package called a DIP package, which is dual inline package. Um, and so basically it's so that one side of the leads will fit in right here. This gap is spaced precisely such that the other side of the leads will fit into here. So the chips will fit in very nicely and then we can connect things up to the chip. Now, let's look at our power supply here. Um, this power supply, we can do you know, positive, negative voltage. We can do plus, minus voltage. Um, but there are some fixed voltages here. Uh, this right here is a fixed 12 volt DC. And it can put out at most 0.5 amps, which is fine. We're not going to need a lot of current for our experiments. 5 volt DC fixed. Um, and that's useful because in your logic courses, uh, you'll be doing a lot of things with just 5 volts. Um, 5 volts kind of being a logic 1, 0 volts being a logic 0. So it's kind of nice for just having a fixed 5 volt um, for your uh, circuit boards. And so, and that's what we're going to use here in a second. But then also over here, we've got a variable voltage. So I'm going to just turn that on right now. And when I do a variable voltage, I'm messing with this knob right here. Um, and this is basically... Uh, letting me change the voltage and, and this one can go all the way up to um, roughly 30 volts. Uh, I went up to 31.3, you know, and of course down to, you know, zero volts. Um, so this is a variable one, which is nice. So we can set it, and, and this can be, depending on how you connect it up, we can either have this be positive or negative. Now this current knob here um, is to let you know how much current you're going to let through. Because if you look down underneath here, it's kind of hard to see in the video, it says 0 to 30 volt DC, 0 to 3 amps. Um, so you can actually limit how much current you want coming out. If I have this turned all the way to the right, it's saying it will put out 3 amps if the circuit wants 3 amps. Um, I typically keep it in the middle um, because that's going to be usually enough current for us because um, that's going to be roughly 1.5 amps, which is typically plenty of current for what we have. And then we don't have as much to worry about as having high current going through our, our circuit. Um, although, you know, 1.5 amps is still a pretty high current. All right, so let's go back and, again, we're going to try and create this circuit. Now, first off, anytime I'm doing anything with power, you should wire it with the power off. Now, this is what I've done with some of my um, breadboard wires. You see this red wire I've... Um, stripped both ends here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one end um, this wire is a little bit long here but I'm tr I've put things closer together in this video than I normally have it and then I'm going to put the positive side in here into this little thing there it's like kind of the old school stereo speakers 
So again, that's just sitting in the positive rail. So now I've got, I'm gonna have the positive there. And then I did a similar thing with my black ones here. And you can make them shorter or longer, but it kind of makes it kind of nice just to get the positive and negative voltage into there. And so then I'm gonna just put that then into here. So what you wanna think of here is the way I've got this connected in is that I've got plus five on the red column and ground on the blue column. All right, so we can go ahead and actually, I'm gonna move my knob here to measure voltage DC. Um, and then what I'll do here is I, I don't like to use, I, I like to have at least some color difference. Um, the bin of wires I have here at home doesn't have any red ones in there for some reason. Um, so I'm gonna use yellow. Um, but I tend to like use black for ground and like red for power. So I'm gonna use it yellow here. But I'm doing this here because I'm gonna turn the power supply back on now because I'm not gonna wire anything more at this point. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and touch these um, two things here and move my hand so you can see. Come on. I'm not making good connection here. So what I'll do is it's not dangerous to do this with the voltages and currents we're looking at. You can actually just kind of hold it there with your fingers. Um, and let's see here, what am I getting here? Come on, fingers aren't working here. Ah, the problem is, is my, I don't think my ground is all the way in there. Let's try this again. Okay, I paused the video there, and so there's probably a little jump here because I wasn't getting the measurement correctly, and it turns out it's because your professor's a moron. Um, I'm obviously being a little sarcastic here. You may have noticed it. I had it set in this position, but that's for measuring AC voltage. And that, in fact, I mean, I'm not suggesting that you do this. Um, in fact, don't do this, but, uh, you know, when you're in this mode, you can literally stick your probes into a wall socket to measure you know, and get 120 volt coming out of your wall power. Um, you know, I would not recommend doing that just because, you know, it's not necessarily a safe way of measuring that. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with using it on the probe. It's just more of a trying to jam things into an electric socket isn't the proper way to do things. Um, but what we're not trying to measure AC voltage, we're trying to measure DC voltage. So I switch it to the correct mode here. And then suddenly when I touch um, these probes back up to the two things here, we get 5.08 volts. So that's what's coming out of the power supply, or 5.07. Now, again, um, if we don't connect things up correctly, like for instance, and I just shoved that down, and shove that down. If I put the positive, uh, if I flip the uh, way it is and put the positive one on ground and the black one on the uh, 5 volt, the yellow cable, I'm reading, I'm still getting 5, but I'm reading negative 5.07. And that's because, you know, we're, we flipped the method of measuring it in the sense that we've um, flipped our probes around. So it's always important if you're wanting to make sure to get accurate measurements that, you know, this one here always needs to be connected to the ground if you're trying to measure a voltage at a particular point. If you're measuring the voltage across something, again, you want this side to be on the what would be considered the ground side of the uh, component, and this would be on the positive side of the component when you're measuring things. All right, so let's go ahead and build our circuit now. Um, turn the power supply off again, because I'm gonna be building something. Uh, now, I have the two resistors here right now, um, and, you know, even though you could kind of put the resistor in here, I like to uh, make sure to have things different. And on the first lab, they kind of have, I believe, a little, um, it's called a fritzing thing that I did um, to show you a one possible configuration on it. Now, I put the 1K ohm resistor in like this because it's in two different rows now. And I want it to be in two different rows 
because if I look here at my diagram, I have one, two, three nodes. And so you can think of this as one node up here, this is the second node, and then I have a third node that I have yet to, to create here. And so I can get my 2.2k, which is connected to one of the nodes of the 1k. So, and as a side note, um, I didn't do this like the lab shows, but you should measure the value of the resistances, just like we saw in the previous video, how you can measure the value of the resistances. Um, and so I'm putting the 2.2k in there now. And then, um, again, I have to kind of think of, okay, well, that's this point right here, this row where I put those two in the same row, that's this node. Well, this node down here, which is the other side of the 2.2k, is connected to the negative side, or it's connected to ground. So I'll take this black wire and put it into that row. And then the 1k is connected to positive. So I'll just go ahead and move this and put this on the positive side here and connect it up to the positive side. So now I've built this circuit and I can go ahead and turn my power supply back on to do measurements. Now, just a reminder, when you're measuring resistance, you have to measure the resistance with the resistors not in the circuit and with the power supply off, obviously. Um, so I'm going to turn it on here. So I've got that 5 volts going through there. And now if I want to say, okay, well, what's the voltage at a particular node here, for instance, if I want to say, well, what's the voltage across the 1K resistor? Well, I have to go to the positive side of the 1K resistor. Let me move this back in here. And the positive side, of course, would be um, right here. And then I'm going to go to the negative side. So I'll go to the other side here, touch it here. And sometimes, there we go. And we're getting 1.599 volts. So that's the voltage drop across the 1K resistor. And then if I do it here for the 2.2K, do the same kind of thing. Put the positive here and the other one here. i got to move my hand. You get 3.499 volts. Now, you should be able to add those up to get the voltage. Now, sometimes, you know, trying to touch things in there gets a little annoying, especially when you get a big annoying circuit. So another thing that is actually kind of a useful trick to do here, um, I'm trying to find some longer wires here in my kit here. For some reason, they're all shorter. Ah, here we go. That's, that's good enough here. So I've got two longer wires here. And I'm going to say, okay, well, I want to measure the 1K. So I'm going to put it in across the 1K. And then what I can do here is just, I'll show you here, I'm going to just hold this on here with this um, and hold it on here on the other side. Oh, wait, that one's <laughs> pin is broken, so let me get a different one here. Hold it on the other side then. And we get the same value, of course, but it's a little bit easier because you can see I'm just I'm literally holding it here and it's a little bit easier to do that measurement um, as opposed to having to touch it right up against the resistor. Um, now, you know, when you're talking about measuring uh, like a circuit board or something, you know, in general, you don't want to be holding it with your fingers that that's actually not something you should do in practice, because what I'm doing now is I, I've actually putting 1.5 you know, by connecting it up like this and holding it like this, I have 1.599 volts going across my body. Now, it's fine because this is DC voltage, low current, um, and, you know, your body has enough resistance with all your flesh and everything else that, you know, 1.599 volts isn't enough to um, have any substantial current running through your body. But we have to be careful because if you have a high voltage, you absolutely would not want to do this like this because suddenly you would have um, you could you could actually kill yourself or really injure yourself. So you wouldn't want to do this for high voltages. But for the low voltages we'll be doing in in the lab, that would be okay. Um, a better thing would be to create um, uh, basically well not create. You can actually I'll sh maybe put a link there. 
there's different kinds of cables you can get for these so that instead of being probes that there's alligator clips on the other end. And so you could actually just then clip it on here. But then if you're thinking about probing a circuit board, you're not going to be sitting there to probe a circuit board. The components, first off, are going to be soldered in. And so you'll be able to just kind of touch across it, which is why we have these kinds of probes here is that as opposed to the alligator clips, because in general, you're not going to want to clip these things on. It's just in the breadboard situation, it can be a little challenging um, because the resistor wants to move on you um, to, to, to measure the voltage precisely there. But I did it again here by just touching that. All right, so hopefully that's a, that's a, this video here is helping you get started with uh, some of the labs here. Uh, make sure if you have questions, um, we can go over them in my office hours um, or we can even talk about them in the live sessions here. and how to